An alternative approach for scheduling is shortest job first or SJF scheduling. In shortest job first scheduling, we assume that for each process, we know the uh, next CPU burst. Therefore, uh, we're able to make our decision, scheduling decision, based on the uh, length of that CPU burst. Shortest job first is an optimal solution. That means it is the best solution you can find uh, if your uh, primary aim target is to uh, find the uh, scheduling decision with the minimum average waiting time. In other words, it minimizes the uh, waiting, average waiting time. Uh, the difficulty in uh, the shortest job for scheduling approach is that knowing the length of the next CPU uh, request. So how would you magically know that value? One solution could be asking it to the user, but how would the user know? An alternative approach could be the compiler may calculate. Since the compiler knows the instructions, the compiler may calculate the length of the uh, next CPU burst. So somehow places that information uh, in the uh, binary executable code so that the scheduler may also look at that value and uh, make the decision accordingly. But this is still difficult and more important, it's error prone because uh, even the compiler knows the instructions, the length of the next CPU burst depends on the values of the variables at that very moment. For example, if you have an if statement with a very long then part, but also a very short else part, whether you take the then part or the else part depends on the expression uh, in the if statement. At compile time, you cannot know what that expression will be because it depends on the input when the program is run. So the compiler cannot exactly calculate what the next CPU burst length will be. So therefore, unfortunately, shortest job for scheduling is most of the time a hypothetical approach. However, it's still very important because it defines the upper bound for us because it provides optimality. In other words, it provides an optimal solution if the primary criteria is uh, minimizing the average waiting time. Why is it important for us? Well, if I design a new scheduling algorithm, I can find how good or bad that algorithm is by looking at how far the results obtained are to the optimal value. Now, at that point, SCF gives me the optimal value. If my results uh, are close to the optimal value, then I can say there is not much room for improvement anymore. So there is no means of trying to improve the algorithm further because I'm already close to the optimal value. Note that it's not possible to do better than the optimal solution. So if we're already close to the uh, optimal solution, we might say, okay, that's enough. However, if I'm far away, my results are too far from uh, the optimal solution, I should keep on trying to find a better solution because there is too much room for improvement in this case. That's uh, where the uh, importance of SGF comes. So let's look at an example for the shortest job first uh, algorithm. This time we have, uh, in this example, we have four processes, but again, we're assuming that they all arrive at t equals zero in the order p1, p2, p3, and p4. Uh, so, uh, and also the their burst times are known beforehand as six, eight, seven, and three. So the Gantt chart for uh, shortest job uh, first scheduling would be as follows. At t equals zero, since I know these four processes and I also know their burst times, I will pick the shortest one. Why? Because the idea in shortest job first, as the name implies, is to pick the shortest one so that it clears the path as soon as possible. 
we get it since it's the shortest one. We know it will complete uh, in the shortest time. So we will be left with the next shortest, the next shortest. So this way, uh, the waiting times will be uh, minimum because we know the second process will wait only for the length of the first process, which is minimum. Then the third one will be will have been waiting for the uh, sum of the lengths of first and second, which are the minimum two. So this way, the waiting time for each process would be shortest. Uh, so we will first have P4, then P1, P3, and P2, which will have uh, the waiting times of 3, 16, 9, and 0, uh, respectively. This is 0 because, remember, we start with P4. So if you take the average, it would be 7. That means you cannot find an algorithm that will have lower wait, average waiting time. It could be at best 7 milliseconds.